Welcome to Tech Intersect. I'm your host, Tanya Evans, and my life and work exist at the heart of law, business, and technology. Yeah, I've earned a few fancy titles and degrees over the years, but the bottom line is I'm a writer, speaker, teacher, and lifelong learner. And I'm really excited that you've joined me on this journey. So what is Tech Intersect? Well, it's authentic, empowering conversations with really interesting guests who demystify complex topics to prepare you for the future, because your future is now. And it exists where law, business, and tech intersect. Get ready to listen, learn, and leverage. Let's get started. In this episode of Tech Intersect, I speak with Clev Mesador, founder of Logos, the first decentralized social platform exclusively for activists. Logos leverages blockchain technology to deliver a decentralized, secure, protected network, ensuring trolls and their fake profiles are barred and provocative works are not censored. So it's a really unique peer-to-peer experience that seeks to empower disruptors, And this is a really important project for such a time as this in order to reach contemporaries globally and make meaningful connections to support positive social evolution and equality. Previously, Clev served as an Obama presidential appointee, working as the director of public affairs for the U.S. Department of Commerce's Economic Development Administration, where she was charged with promoting White House economic programs and national public-private partnerships to advance innovation and entrepreneurship. During this episode, we have an authentic and empowering conversation about race, cryptocurrency, and financial inclusion. And we explore the importance of education in Black and Brown communities about blockchain and cryptocurrency by dramatically reducing barriers to entry and participation. We also explore the importance of the lessons of freedom from Juneteenth as a context for the broader conversation of economic empowerment. I know you'll learn a lot. I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as we enjoyed having it. And for more information about cryptocurrency and blockchain and what the heck we're talking about, please sign up for my upcoming free webinar, Crypto 101, The Digital Cash Economy. It's on June 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And for a deeper dive, enroll into my three-week live coaching course intensive from cash to crypto. All the details are available at advantageevans.com. So let's hop into the episode. Time to listen, learn, and leverage. Let's get started. Today, I am ridiculously excited to speak with Clev Mesador, founder of Logos Blockchain, editor of Blockchain Buzz, head of National Policy Network of women of color in blockchain and former Obama appointee. So many things, all the things. I'm excited for her to explain her origin story to you uh, when we get to that. She is one of my favorite people in the blockchain space, and uh, I so admire her work, her commitment, her passion for informing and empowering Black and Brown women in particular uh, in the blockchain space. So I could not think of a better person to speak with about digital and financial inclusion in blockchain and cryptocurrency uh, as a source of empowerment. Nobody else, no one better than Clev. But before we get into all of that important work, Clev, welcome. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. All right. So let's dive in and let's begin. You have such a beautiful and uh, rich origin story that led you to this moment in time. So can you encapsulate that for us, for the listeners, about what led you to becoming involved as this impassioned leader and trailblazer in the blockchain space, particularly in policy and legislative initiatives? Yes, yes. And again, thank you for having me on. You're one of the pioneers of this space who's doing such incredible work and making it easier for those of us who are trying to, you know, do great things. And I think I love your story because it's one we have to tell because a lot of Mm. people feel that they have to learn about blockchain before they get into blockchain. And Mm. for me, I, I use my story to tell people that I lean back on my expertise You don't have to leave your domain. You don't have to find a new career. It's wherever you are at, 
how can you leverage blockchain tech technology to solve some of the problems within your current industry, company, or even community? So for me, as you mentioned, I have a political background. You know, I worked on Capitol Hill, worked in the Obama administration. And, you know, at some point, I fell in love with the blockchain community. I first mm-hmm. learned about Bitcoin when I was in the Obama administration. But I did not get involved intimately until 2016 when the conversation expanded beyond cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. And we started mm-hmm. talking about intellectual property protections, open source And then we talked about the potential of blockchain beyond currency. So for me, I actually, you know, love to connect people. And so that's why I created Logos Blockchain to actually lean back on my activism background and create a space for activists to connect and disrupt. And along the way, as I mentioned, I lean Mm -hmm. back on my public policy background there, at some point, as you know, the conversation went to Washington, who wanted to regulate the space, who was finally paying attention, but many of them were not uh, clear on what the space was. So I connected back to some of my former colleagues, made new friends like Kristen Smith at the Blockchain Association, and we started talking about how do we get Washington to pay attention and to stay focused. And for me, it is they don't see enough people that look like them. The right. people lobbying Washington were wealthy men who, who were making the point, if you think of back to the to David Marcus and that Facebook hearing talking about right. financial inclusion, well, you know what? A lot of the members of color are thinking, wait, you're talking about financial inclusion? So I worked with the Blockchain Association and Peter with others to bring women of color from all over the country to Washington to meet with the, the, their members who represent them. There's something right. so powerful for members of Congress to, to not just see diversity, but to see geographic diversity from where they hail and mm. see that women of color, people of color are already building in this space and also know that we have something at stake here, that we will be impacted. And I think you know, that has been great in terms of really fostering inclusion. You're making such a huge difference to connect. You are the bridge between so many constituencies that really do need to come together in order to affect positive change in terms of digital and financial uh, inclusion. And so I, um, I think of it, actually, it was the last time I actually attended an event before COVID-19 took over the entire world. Okay. I was honored to attend the National Policy Network Women of Color Blockchain's Fireside Chat and Reception on the Hill. And you organized that, you led it for Black History Month, and you partnered with Coinbase and the Blockchain Association. Could you talk about that? Because that room was filled to capacity. You had all of the presentations and the representatives who were available in order to connect. That was a really powerful moment. And that that room spoke volumes. Oh my goodness. And it was powerful. And I want to give props to Coinbase. I've worked with their team on various projects. Tariq Myers over there leads their inclusion team and is really invested in, in having a real conversation about financial inclusion. And that's what this event was. You know, Tariq reached out to Kristen and myself to talk about how do we do this event. And we wanted to make sure that, you know, we're not just focusing about Black History Month, that we're having a substantive conversation. And we're showing the diversity in this space. And you're right. It was a packed room. You know, we had four or five members of Congress speak. We had Devon Brown, who is the counsel for the Financial Services Committee, you know, participated on the fireside chat. And the feedback was was that we had the substantive conversation in a diverse and inclusive space, which is important because it's not just members of Congress who want to see diversity, geographic and, and racial, but it's also other people. That is how we you know, take down the barriers to entry. People need to see themselves reflected. People to, need to know that blockchain is not an ex- exclusive club. It is actually an economic revolution that empowers everyone. Absolutely. And that is... <sighs> the divide or the bridge that I seek to build so that we demystify the space so that people understand this is another way, uh, another path toward empowerment, right? That that we have so many lanes that will get us there. And also 
I'm so concerned that black and brown people will be left behind in this fourth industrial revolution in the mm-hmm. same way that we were in the dot-com boom and any major advance forward from a technological or financial point of view. We're just, our communities are, are, are impacted yeah. negatively and, and we're starting again as a matter of each generation. And if the next generation has to start over, they're at an epic deficit. They're not starting in the same place. You're not going back to the starting point. You're way behind. And so the work that you're doing to educate and empower people uh, and to demystify in the space is is so important. And that leads me to the conversation I want to have about your upcoming Juneteenth celebration and why you feel it's important to combine the message of digital and financial inclusion with Juneteenth. And what I want to do before you talk about that, uh, for those who don't even know what Juneteenth is, I think this is a great time (laughs) to give a little primer and then say D-Y-O-R, do your own research, ask Google, Alexa, they will tell you as well. (laughs) There's some movies, there's some things, Uh, history.com has some information, but Juneteenth is short for June 19th. And it's a holiday commemorating June 19th, 1865, which marked the effective end of slavery in the United States. So this is why many Black Americans refer to Juneteenth and not July 4th as their true Independence Day, because it was on June 19th in 1865, two months after the surrender of the Confederate General Robert E. Lee, so long to your statue, mm-hmm. by the way, um, <laughs> in Virginia, that Union General Gordon Granger and approximately 1,800 federal troops arrived in Galveston, Texas, to take control of the state and to enforce the Emancipation Proclamation. Granger read the General Order Number 3, which declared, in part, the people of Texas are informed that in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, also known as the president, all slaves are free. Now, the interesting part, for those who did not get this in your history lesson in school, more than two years before Granger's announcement, President Abraham Lincoln had already issued the Emancipation Proclamation. That was on January 1st, 1863, Mm -hmm. which made known that all enslaved people in the Confederate States in rebellion against the Union shall then henceforth forward and forever be free. That memo did not get to people for an additional two years, and it was held to pay even after that. Uh, And so I love the fact that you have chosen Juneteenth to affirm the message that we are talking about, digital financial inclusion, participating in the digital cash economy, and the empowerment that that comes from. Um, And and so talk about the vision for this and, and the plans for this and why you've done this. Yes, yes. And thank you for articulating that so well, because Juneteenth is a teaching moment, right? It's Mm. a teaching opportunity. You know, for too long, we've had two Americas where there's, you know, the the one people of color knows, and then the one the, you know, majority community knows. And that is not correct, because Juneteenth is American history. As you illustrated, you know, July 4th is important, but it's important to recognize this injustice that happened, that people were free with the emancipa- Emancipation Proclamation, but didn't know about it till two and a half. And today right. we're talking about new injustices. So so this event was born, obviously, out of in the wake of the, the current racial tragedies that occurred, you know, Aubrey, Brianna, George Floyd. And now the country is enthralled in this conversation about equity and justice and racism, one that it needs to be had, right? And so, and a lot of people ask the question of why is this different? I think COVID-19 is why it's different. COVID-19 put the whole nation on pause. And just as we were thinking about opening up, the protests happened, right? And, right, right. And, and America was actually forced to pay attention. There were no filters, no distraction. And I, I was struck by so many people. It was just like, it was like they were seeing this for the first time. When right. we know we've been to these protests year after year and the crypto community is not immune from what's happening in terms of this racial conversation. And we've been seeing on Twitter a lot of folks, you know, stepping up and say, what can VCs do? You know, people asking, how do they connect with people of color? 
So this event, you know, we're calling it a Juneteenth Open Mic, is an opportunity to have a specific conversation about crypto and race. We have right. some awesome, awesome speakers. There were so many people that we wanted to have, but we wanted to touch on the issues that are top of mind, right? So the VC conversation is critical because everybody wants VCs to be more diverse. Right. Uh, Jalak Jabon Putra is going to speak about that. She's a VC of color. Mm. Isaiah Jackson, who has written the, the, the book, Bitcoin America, I believe he's been on your program and will be, or will be. Yes. And he, he's going to talk about, you know, economic disparities. And what did we see? What do we continue to see in the protests? It's millennials and Zoomers, Gen Z, who are leading right. the way, calling for change, rightfully so, because their future is at stake. Fast forward, you know, 20 years, they have to deal with the consequences of what happens next. So Ruben Ogbona, who leads... Yes who leads, you know, Black and Blockchain and is really rallying millennials and Zoomers is going to talk about that. And we have, you know, Shaley Adolnofi from Consensus who's going to talk about allyship. So mm. we have a pretty robust schedule because we wanted to, we, we wanted to talk about these issues. So these presenters will speak for no more than one minute and hear from others within the space. Give them an opportunity to ask questions, make statements, and begin to, to brainstorm. We know there will out of this will come various crypto projects by you know innovators of color, by right. by others, which is wonderful. And we need to start looking at this from the lens of crypto in a collective manner. But right? how do we do better? Right? How do we ensure that we don't repeat the problems of big tech? And the crypto space becomes a space with lacking of inclusion. So very excited about this call, this conversation, and it will be only a first step. We hope you're enjoying this edition of Tech Intersect. Our conversation will continue in a moment. But first, a word on an exciting opportunity. There's a more cost effective and time efficient way to reach your leading edge learning and earning goals to put you ahead of the stiff competition in this fast paced tech driven economy. You need skills, credentials and a fast track to a competitive advantage. You need it now more than ever. And I can help invest in the future you've always wanted. And in as little as three weeks, you'll be on your way to greater autonomy, control and opportunity in your life. The Advantage Evans method puts you ahead of the curve with condensed, comprehensive online courses, curated content to leverage your current skills and expertise in order to succeed in the new economy, live coaching with me, networking opportunities, and a digital badge on completion. Upcoming courses include From Cash to Crypto, Buying Your First Bitcoin, and Register Right, Protecting Your IP, Brand, and Business. Ready for your advantage? Well, get on the fast track to learn and earn at AdvantageEvans.com. And now, back to the conversation. You love listening to podcasts, but have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? Maybe you want to build a brand, grow your business, or are looking for an excuse to talk about your favorite hobby. Whatever your reason for making a podcast, Buzzsprout is the place to start. Since 2009, Buzzsprout has helped over 300,000 people launch their own podcasts. Buzzsprout walks you step-by-step -step through the whole process and will give you powerful tools to start, grow, and monetize your podcast. Ready to get started? Click the link in the show notes to get our free step-by-step -step guide to starting your podcast today. So that's the difference between the moment and the movement, right? That yes. This is a, a series of steps. This is not a linear path, but it's a process. It's, it's an evolution. It's set within the context of a revolution. Yes. And it's critically important that we have all of the tools in the toolbox in order to affect change and to move forward. I'd love to get back to Black Wall Street. And Black Wall Street will absolutely in include cryptocurrencies, some type of digital cash in mm -hmm. some t form or fashion. I know although it was not successful, didn't wind up in the final version of the CARES Act, even coming out of Chairwoman Waters mm -hmm. um, committee to try and get a digital dollar into that bill would have meant a lot decreasing, I should say, the time that it takes to get 
value in hand because it was such, you know, we're in the middle of a crisis. Yeah. What do you think the barriers are to entry? I find them to be considerable. I'm, you know, I'm an amazingly popular nerd, but absolutely a nerd and lifelong learner at heart. I have, as an educator, I like to look under the hood and tinker with things so that I can explain them in plain, plain English. But there's a lot of barriers in blockchain and in crypto for everyone. Yeah. What are the unique and particular barriers for black and brown communities uh, and, and things that you seek to alleviate and remedy? Well, I think the most obvious barrier that we've all spoken about is the fact that this thing is hard to explain. Right. It took me two years to try to figure it out before I could say I understood it, right? right. <laughs> and and then I, I run a newsletter, a weekly newsletter, and it goes out to thousands, but it's really my way of keeping up and staying up to date. So mm -hmm. you mentioned earlier demystifying crypto. We have to find a way to simplify it because right now people don't get it. And right. And those of us who are in crypto love crypto. We protect crypto. But we underestimate that our protectiveness is keeping people out, right? Mm. Many of us forget it wasn't not, not that long ago that we were at meetups not knowing what this was, <laughs> asking people for help. And now we expect people to know about it, understand it. So, so I think one of the barriers is, you know, the fact that it's difficult and the fact that sometimes, you know, the crypto community is not as welcoming as it can be, which is one of the reasons I'm so thrilled that you are doing your courses because people, again, people want to learn from people who are like them, whether it be learn from a woman, learn from a woman of color. But also, people want to learn in comfortable settings. So right. the, the, the course that you're offering, we need more of that, right? Because people, the access points are clear to us within the crypto community, but they're not clear if you're just sitting in Philadelphia or Ohio somewhere, Cleveland. So that's a clear, you know, that's an easy barrier. Well, I shouldn't say that's an easy to identify barrier. There's, mm. there's also others. You mentioned you know, the fourth industrial revolution and this fusion of all these technologies and people of color are being left out because there was there were barriers to access for t big tech. And now we're asking them to coalesce around a space that we say is an economic revolution, but they don't understand how to get there. Right. So, so I think, you know, in the conversations that we're having about the innovation economy and where we're going, we need to make sure that we're intentional about including people of color. And we're, we also, going back to what you're doing in the academic space, you and folks like Chris Brummer are great in terms of making sure your academic institutions have people who are expertise in this space who are teaching the next generation. Right, right. It's so important because, you know, I'm so committed to ensuring that the next wave of lawyers are... Uh, and, and it's a part of our um, professional responsibility to be technologically competent. But you always want a lawyer to be in an active process while these Web3 builds are occurring, not to have the build occur and then send it up to legal so mm -hmm. they can tell you everything that's wrong and why you can't do it. Like we, we're past that. That's so 20th century. We're about solutions, problem solving. Nobody wants a 50 page legal brief. We need to have answers and, and this um, space moves so quickly and so rapidly. Yes. You have to immerse yourself. Now, I love what you said earlier. You don't abandon the expertise that you've spent your life building. Yes. I've, you know, I graduated from law school in 1998. I've practiced a long time. I've been in academia for over 13 years. I don't abandon that because there's a new technology. I figure out my lane. I learn enough across the board to have some competence generally. And then I take a deep dive in my particular area. What does it mean for intellectual property? What does it mean for entertainment? How is it going to change rights and the transfer of rights, real property, um, the tokenization yeah. of real world assets? So you can find your lane and you don't have to be a technologist. You don't have to have a STEM background in order to fully embrace it. And you can't wait for that because this is where we are, yeah. right? It's just, <laughs> this is where we are. And in order to participate fully and to be ready, like stay ready so you don't have to get ready, <laughs> is to continue to educate yourself in bite-sized 
pieces. Yeah. Um, but it's also important that people can get multiple opportunities because as you said, the rabbit hole is real. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, the rabbit hole is real. <laughs> yes. And and we need resources. So and yeah. and that's why, you know, the work that I'm doing on Capitol Hill, working with again Blockchain Association and Biotechnology F Foundation and Coinbase and others, it's because we need to keep bringing people of color to Washington. I'm excited that we're going to do the congressional briefing again in March of 2021. This time mm -hmm. we're hoping to bring 100 women to Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm. There was such a huge excitement and enthusiasm and so much, so even members' offices and their staff followed up to, to, to ask about how they can be involved, how they can do follow-up events. So mm -hmm. in March 2021, we hope to bring a delegation of 100. We want people to see people of color. We want to promote the, the people of color who are doing incredible, incredible work and in building such strong products. But we also want to make sure that you know, we're communicating to folks how diverse this space is. I tell people all the time that women of color are the fastest growing demographic within the crypto space. It's actually mm. people of color. And so where and when you think about the innovation economy, people of color tend to be huge consumers. And so we're building the, the, these products and we want to make sure that Congress is not just implementing smart legislation, but resources are getting to these communities as well. One of the legislative proposals that I put forth is for Congress to direct the Small Business Administration to create a pilot, a pilot where there's a 7A loan for blockchain entrepreneurs. And obviously, mm. you know, it would have to be tweaked because many of the stuff we're building, they are you know, proof of concept projects, they're in beta form. And also they will require more time to actually yield a return. So this would require, you know, working with lenders and to have a different approach to a 7A loan. But Congress is in a position to get the SBA to create economic opportunity, especially as they see so many people of color are already building in this space. And we need to get their products and their services to the marketplace. Absolutely. And that's the the important part about when when we're referring to the space listeners, there's a, a lot of space within the space. There are sometimes uh, people who are investors. Maybe you are earning crypto. Maybe you are building at the protocol level, meaning you are actively involved in coding blockchains. Maybe you're building decentralized applications on top. And I have an upcoming free webinar. I'll talk through some of these things because my hope is to speak at a plain English level to not use any of the jargon, Good. no jargon. It's going to be a no jargon 101 webinar. What are you talking about? Like I'm talking to my mom and her friends on Friday nights when I set them up on my Zoom. <laughs> like, if, <laughs> yes. What can I tell them in 15 minutes that will make sense? That will be the webinar. And certainly not to dumb it down, but to, to make it plain so that people, and I oftentimes speak uh, speak first about the problem that Satoshi intended to solve. Mm -hmm. And then from that, go to some of the problems that this type of technology can actually make better, faster, cheaper. Yeah. People love better, faster, cheaper. Let's start with the use cases. And then uh, I tell people all the time, I know that you've heard this or said this yourself. I don't have to know everything that's under the hood of my Volvo. I really don't. I'm not going to work on it. I'm not going to mm -hmm. take it apart. The car drives. It goes from A to B. This is a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so, but for those who do want to get into coding and coding for blockchains, there's so many jobs, you know, where I'm always talking to people about the jobs of the future, the ones that don't exist yet, because think of all of the Web 3.0 jobs in, in artificial intelligence, machine yeah. learning, drones, VR, you know, um, and obviously blockchain and crypto assets that did not exist three years ago, let alone 10. Right. Exactly. So it's about refreshing your skills, being a lifelong learner, having a growth mindset and really being about the agency and freedom that comes from multiple ways. And participating in this space will be one of the most important ones that you participate in. And that's why your work on the Hill is so important. Yeah. No. And, and I love this space because most people understand the pay gap. They understand the wealth gap. They understand the, the problems of banking. And all we're saying is that there are blockchain protocols that can help to solve some of the problems. 
And if you understand the problems, we can help you understand some of the protocols. We can find solutions. Perfect. That's a perfect way to tie this up. Um, I see we are short on time. I want to get you back to your next 17 engagements (laughs) and (laughs) calendared items in your day. So please share with the listeners how they can connect with you and your work and also remind them of your upcoming event. Yes. Twitter is the best way to access me. I'm at CMESI, at C-M-E-S-I. The event is coming up. June 19th, which is Juneteenth, we're doing the call from 12.30 to 1.30 Eastern, 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. Eastern. It will be done via Zoom. You can go on my Twitter page, at CMESI, and there'll be a link, for you, an Eventbrite link to register. We want as many people to participate as possible. We want to hear from you. We want to connect, and we want to begin a conversation. So please join us. And my website is www.mylogos.io, mylogos.io. Perfect. I will drop all of those in the show notes. I will be there on Juneteenth and I wish you continued success. Um, I'm your partner in power. You know where I live on the Twitterverse and (laughs) um, anything you do, I'm a fan. Anything you need, you let me know. Likewise. Thank you so much for having me on. If there's one takeaway I want to reaffirm from this really engaging conversation, it's that blockchain is not an exclusive club that is out of your reach. As Clev so accurately described, blockchain, which is the technology infrastructure that powers cryptocurrencies, is an economic revolution that has the potential to level the playing field and empower everyone, not just the wealthy or technologically and financially savvy few. Don't get left behind. We've created a safe and affirming space and place for you to learn in a way that's accessible and supportive. Financial freedom in the new digital cash economy is within your reach and economic empowerment is within your grasp. The future Black Wall Streets of the country and world are possible and it begins with you. So as a reminder, if you'd like to learn more about how to participate in the new digital cash economy, visit AdvantageEvans.com, sign up for the free webinar, enroll in a course, empower yourself, take that step forward. From cash to crypto, we'll teach you everything you need to know about cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, how to buy, invest, earn, and protect in a way that's safe, legal, and empowering. And mention Tech Intersect for a discount and bonus crypto tax session. Let's win. Let's do this together. That's all for now. Until next time, continue to shine. Stay in touch with host Tanya Evans via your favorite social media on Twitter at at Tech Intersect and on Instagram via the handle Tech Intersect. This podcast has been produced by Stephanie Renee for Soul Sanctuary Incorporated.